Good day, my angels. I miss all of you. I hope you're doing well. So here are the solutions for lesson three, Kirchhoff's Laws. I know the lesson was a bit longer than normal. Um, I'm going to explain to you how I'm finding all of these numbers because as we get into more and more complicated circuits, it's going to be kind of a step-by-step -step procedure. So the steps that I gave you were label downhill, try and find the total current leaving the battery. If you find this, the question is going to fall apart. Look for any place in the circuit where you know two things. Knock, knock. I know two things. If I know two things, I know four things. And then we're going to use our skiing tricks, Kirchhoff's laws. Current going into a junction has to equal current going out of a junction in amps. And for voltage, any voltage I gain from the battery, I have to lose as long as I'm always skiing downhill and end up at the bottom of the battery. And there's going to be a fifth one, but we haven't got to that yet. So step one is going to be label downhill. Looks like all they want me to do here is label the voltages. So I gain 240 volts. That must mean, because I can start at the top of the chairlift battery and end up at the bottom along that loop, I have to lose 240 volts. So here I've lost 80. Here I've lost 60. That means I must have lost 100 volts going through that section of the circuit, that resistor right there. Remember, voltage is energy per coulomb, so this resistor is using 100 joules of energy for every coulomb that goes through there. This resistor is using 80 joules of energy for every coulomb that travels through it. This resistor is using 60 joules of energy for every coulomb that goes through it. Number two, label downhill. Downhill, downhill, downhill. Looks like we split up three different ways, and then we all rejoin right here. So... I'm starting out with 12.5 amps. Here we split up. 2.5 amps went that way. 4 amps went this way. That must mean that 6.0 amps went this way. And that way when they rejoin, I get 12.5 amps. Number three, label downhill, 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 downhill. Here, they didn't tell me how many volts we're starting with, but I know that I lost 12 volts going through that resistor, 18 volts going through there, 20 volts going through there, and this is all one continuous ski run, so the only way that I can lose that many volts is if I started with that many volts, so 12 plus 18 is 30 plus 20, this has to have been a 50 volt voltage source. Number four, downhill, downhill. Looks like we split apart and we rejoin. Well, two amps, two amps went this way, one amp went this way, so the only way for that to work is if I had three amps flowing in. So this has to have been three, oh, that's messy. Three, come on, 3.0 amps. I don't think I assigned number five, but I'll talk about it anyways. So it says these three bulbs are identical. Which bulb is the brightest? Remember when we're talking about brightness, we're talking about power. And I think I'm going to use the idea that power is I squared R. All of these have the same resistor because it says they're all identical. But going through bulb A, I have total current. Going through bulb B, I have only half the current. And through bulb C, 
I have only half the current. So which of those would give me a larger I squared R? Bulb A would be the brighter bulb. Bulb B and C would be of equal brightness, but not as bright as bulb A. Now, I did that one kind of conceptually. The other thing you could have done is just make up a resistor. Oh, let's pretend each bulb is 5 ohms and actually solve this. Especially when we get to way more complicated questions, I'll often just choose to do a numerical solution than trying to do it conceptually. Number six. Ooh, this looks like a fun one. If I haven't mentioned already, I love solving circuits. These are like Sudoku puzzles to me. I find these very zen-like. Find the unknown voltages and currents. Step one, label downhill. That's downhill, that's downhill, 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 downhill. Step two, try and find the total current, because if I can figure that out, so how many amps do I have coming from here? Well, that would be the total current if I knew it. That, uh, I don't know the current there. Ooh, okay. Step three, look for any place in the circuit where I know two things. Knock, knock. I know two things, I know four things. Oh, well, this question isn't asking me to find power, but I can certainly find voltage by using V equals I times R. I can tell you that this is 10 volts. Not only that, because these two resistors are identical, that must mean that the current here is identical. The current split up evenly between the two of them, which means now when I rejoin, you know what? This must be two amps right there. This must be two amps right there. And here, because these resistors are identical, the current must split 50-50 into one amp and one amp. Knock, knock. I know two things. V equals I times R. This has to be 50 volts. This has to be 50 volts. Knock, knock. I know two things right here. This has to be 10 volts. Now what? Ski. If I ski downhill, I start with 100 volts. I don't know how many volts that I lose there, but if I go through this hill, I lose 50. And if I go through either one of these, I lose 10. So I lose 50. I lose 10, I must be losing 40 volts. Otherwise, how the heck could I get rid of that 100 volts along that yellow path? I could also have skied this path. And I'll get the same answer. 50 volts, 10 volts, that's 60 volts lost. I need to lose 100 volts. I have to lose 40 volts there. And now, knock, knock, I know two things. That means I know three things or four things, I can find resistance R equals V over I, so it's going to be a 20 ohm resistor. I like solving circuits. Oh, wrong one. Number seven. Ooh, this one's going to be cool. Find the unknown voltages and currents. Again, probably I could also say find the unknown power loss in each resistor, or I could simply say if these are all light bulbs, which bulb is brightest. Meanwhile, step one, label downhill. Looks like we go around this way, we rejoin. Uh, step two, Find the total current leaving the battery. Interesting, this, this question actually wants me to figure that out. How many amps right there? I don't know. Do, 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 do. Ooh, how many amps right here? Four amps. How many amps right here? Four amps. How many amps right here? Four amps. How many amps leaving the battery? Four amps. Do, do, do. How many amps right here? Four amps. How many amps right here just before the junction? Four amps. How many amps went this way? Two amps. So how many amps went this way? Must have been two amps. Otherwise, how could I get four amps? Oh, 
What about voltages? Now, there's two things I could do. I could realize for voltage that because we're splitting up right here and meeting up right here, that this voltage and this voltage will be identical. The voltage loss here is 4 volts. The voltage loss here is 4 volts. Or I could ski this outer run. And I could say, you know what? I got 12 volts. I don't know what I lose here, but I lost 4 volts. And that was enough apparently to get rid of all 12 volts. So I must have lost 8 volts going through that resistor and 4 volts going through that resistor. You could figure that out by skiing the inner run. But that concept of if we split up and meet up, we must go through an identical voltage drop. Really, really handy as a lovely shortcut. Oh, number eight. I like that. Find the unknown voltages and currents. And if I wanted to, I could use P equals V times I and find the power. All right, step one, label downhill. That's 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 downhill. Step two, try and find the total current leaving the battery. Oh, nine amps. This question's going to fall apart. How many amps right here? Nine amps. How many amps right here? Nine amps. How many amps just before we get to the junction? Nine amps. How many amps went this way? Two amps. That must mean that there is seven amps that went this way. And since I noticed that four amps went down this junction, that must mean that three amps went down that middle resistor. So there's my current. What about voltage? Well, I know two things. I could certainly find the resistance. They didn't ask for that. So look for any place where I know two things. Ski. All right. Well, if I ski here, I don't know either voltage. I have two unknowns. If I ski this run, I have two unknowns. But ooh, if I ski this run here, it looks like I lose 6 volts, and that's the only resistor I travel through, which must mean I gain 6 volts. I must have. This has to be a 6-volt source. And if I ski this run, I start with 6. That's the only resistor that gets me all the way down to the ground. I must have 6 volts going through this resistor, 6 volts being lost by that resistor, and 6 volts being lost by that resistor. Now, you might say, Mr. Duick, that's 18 volts from a 6-volt battery. No, it's not. It's 6 volts lost on this path. It's 6 volts lost on this path. And it's 6 volts lost on that path. In no path am I using more than 6 volts. Number 9. Find the unknown voltages and currents. Step one, label downhill. I guess we split up here, so that's downhill, that's downhill, always ski downhill. Step two, try and find the total current leaving the battery. How many amps right here? I don't know. How many, ooh, how many amps right here? Six amps. How many amps then leaving the battery? Must be Six amps. This question's going to fall apart. Step three, look for anywhere where I know 
two things. Now, I know two things here. I can find resistance and power, but they're not interested in that. And I know two things here. I can find resistance and power, but they're not interested in that. I think what I now am going to have to try and figure out is the voltage. Specifically, I'm going to have to figure out how many volts this battery is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ski, and I'm going to ski da always downhill, never turning back, always going downhill, but I'll make sure to take uh, resistors that they've told me the voltage for. How many volts do I lose here? Six. I lose three more for a total of nine. I lose four going through there for a total of 13. That got me to the bottom of the chairlift. That must mean that this battery must be a 13 volt source. Oh, also, if I have six amps going through here, I must have six amps going through there. And I have six amps right here, six amps right here, six amps right here. Two amps went this way. That must mean four amps went this way. And then I could ski, or I can realize that we split up and met up we must go through the same voltage drop. That must also be 4 volts. Number nine, uh, 10 and number 11. Cool. Number 10, label downhill. Try and find total current. Do I know how many amps are leaving right there? Well, it would be the same as the amperage going through there because there's no junctions between the battery and this resistor. Oh, how many amps went this way? Two amps. How many amps went this way? Five amps. How many amps must have been flowing in then? Must have been seven amps. How many amps are leaving the battery? Seven amps. This question's going to fall apart. Oh, and since we have four amps going through the bottom resistor, that must mean three amps are going through the top resistor for still a total of seven amps. Alrighty, let's try doing... Oh, you know what? Since I split up and met up and I lost 10 volts going down that particular path, I must lose 10 volts going through this particular path. So this has to be 10 volts. I don't know two things. I don't know two things. I think now I need to ski. I start with 55 volts. I lose 2 volts, leaving 53. I lose 10 volts, leaving 43. And let's go down this path, just because that got me to the bottom of the chairlift. You know what? I still had 43 volts to lose, so this has to be 43 volts. Now, then I could repeat skiing this path. Or I could realize that right here I split up, and we met up, and so this path... And this path will have the same voltage loss, so that upper little resistor there also has to be 43 volts. Number 11, label downhill. Try and find total current leaving the battery. Well, I got one amp going through this resistor, and there's no junctions or gaps in the wire between there and there. So it's got to be one amp leaving the battery. This question's going to fall apart. In fact, you know what? That's going to be one amp, and that's going to be one amp. Step two, look for two things. Knock, knock. I know two things. So V equals I times R. So this is going to be 20 volts. Ooh, I also now know two things here because I filled in the current. V equals I times R is going to be 5 volts. Well, ski, 
I'm starting with 80 volts. I lose 20, leaving 60. I lose 5, leaving 55. You know what? This has got to be 55 volts. And since R equals V over I, because V equals I times R, uh, you know what? This resistor is also 55 ohms. Has to be. Keep hitting the wrong file. Number 12. Okay, I see some currents. Oh, yeah, I see how to do this one. This question's going to fall apart. Label downhill. How many amps leaving the battery? Well, looks like I got three amps that went this way. I got two amps that went that way, which must mean I must have had a total of five amps coming in. Do I know two things? I know two things right here. Knock, knock. So V equals I times R. This has to be 60 volts. Do I know two things? Nope. Do I know two things? Nope. And I can't say that this and this are 60 volts. Here's what I can say. Both of these voltage losses added together will equal this voltage loss. I can say that. So, ski. I start with 120 volts. I go through that resistor. That gets me all the way down to the ground. You know what? That resistor has to be using up then all 120 volts. Knock, knock. I know two things. I know three things or four things. I can tell you the resistance. It's going to be V over R. It's going to be 60 ohms. Now I could ski this ski run, start with 120, lose 60, lose I don't know how much to get to the bottom. I think this has to be 60 volts. Or I could say that's 120, so this has to add to 120. But no matter what, it's clear that has to be losing 60 volts. Oh, and I know that there's three amps going through this resistor because there's no junctions between that resistor and this resist that resistor. I know two things. This is a 20 ohm resistor. Number 13. Don't remember if I assigned number 13. I might have skipped this, but that's okay. I can handle this. So it says in problems... Problem, sorry, I can't edit these anymore. In problems such as these, assume that the two end wires are connected to a battery that hasn't been shown. So I'm going to assume that the battery is over on the left and then that downhill is this way. It doesn't matter which way you let be downhill as long as you're consistent. How many amps? One amp. So that must mean that this also has one amp. Down here I have six, six amps, one amp. So this has got to be seven amps. Knock, knock. I know two things. So I can tell you the voltage, it's going to be I times R. It's going to be 7 times 15, which I think is 105. Oh, I know two things. I can tell you the voltage down here. It's going to be 30 volts, I times R. Oh, I know two things. It's going to be 20 volts, I times R. Oh, I know two things. It's going to be... 10 volts, I times R. Or I could have said, you know what? If this path is 30 volts of loss, this path has to be 30 volts of loss. <coughs> that was kind of fun. I don't remember if I assigned 14 and 15, but I'll do them anyhow because I like solving.
electric circuits. This is relaxing for me. What can be said about currents I1 and R2 if R2 is half as big as R1? So if we have half the resistance right there, that means that I2 is 2 times I1. Half the resistance, twice the skiers. I guess I can write that a little neater. Let's type that. My writing is so atrocious. So what can we conclude? I2 equals 2 times I1. Number 15. What can be said about the voltage drops V1 and V2 if the resistance of R1 is three times the resistance of R2? Well, both of these will have the same current, so same I. But since V1 is I times 3R, it will definitely be larger than V2, which is just I times R. In fact, I think I can safely say V1 is th 3 times V2. So, for example, if this was a 40-volt battery, 30 volts lost, 10 volts lost. Number 16. What can be said about the resistances R1 and R2? if the current through R2 is three times as big. So if the current is three times larger, that means R2 is three times smaller than R1. And you can figure that out because each of these would actually be 10 volts if you use the ski method. And so R equals V over I. So in the first one, you would have uh, 10 divided by I. In the second one, you would have 10 divided by 3I, which would make R2 three times smaller than R1. Is that the last question? Hey, it is. We're really going to dive into solving circuits for the next couple of lessons, so I hope you enjoy them. I 